Hello everyone! Today we're going to, to talk on how to get red and aphids. By the way, my name is Mercy and welcome to my channel. How to get red aphids? Well, aphids are tiny, sap-sucking bug that can occur in most plants, particularly in soft young growth, also known as green fly and black fly. There are actually more than 500 species of aphids, varying in color from green and black and to also yellow and brown and orange, and in size from 1 mm to 7 mm long. Aphids need warm to flourish, so in the garden, this limits their life cycle to spring and summer. However, indoors in the home, greenhouse, and conservatory, aphids can occur at any time of year. Many types of aphids feed only on specific plants, so an infestation on one plant doesn't necessarily mean that is will affect all your plants. Why aphids is a problem? Well, aphids are a natural part of the garden ecosystem and a vital source of food for too many species of birds. That's why sometimes birds are keep coming on your garden. They're, on they're only a problem if they occur in large numbers. Large aphid infestation can weaken plants and cause curling or distortion of affected growth. This can sometimes eventually kill the plants, especially young ones. Some aphid species transfer virus diseases between plants. There are many viruses that cause a range of symptoms including mottled, streak or distorted foliage, and weak growth. Viruses aren't curable so infected plants should be destroyed. An additional problem caused by aphids is a sticky substance they exude, known as honeydew, which has become infested with black mold. This stuff leaves photosynthesizing and inhibit plants' growth. So that's why you can see bl a black spots in your plants if there is an aphids infestation with them. What should we do if we spot, in, we spot an aphids? Well, a small number of aphids on the garden plant is rare, rarely a problem. Birds will quickly pick them off and feed them to their young. However, in, the, in a veg pot where you might be growing lots of the same plant together or indoors where there are no natural predators, so you'll need to act quickly. Often simply hand squeezing a small infestation is all that needed be alert for early warning sign and inspect plants thoroughly aphid can be hard to spot as they nestle in leaf joints and on the underside of the leaves that's why we need we need to check under our leaves are in the leaf joints of our plants and often the first warning sign on indoor and greenhouse plant is the sticky honeydew on the leaves beneath the initial cluster ants running up and down plant stem is another giveaway sign of aphids in the greenhouse as they farm aphids and feed their sweet honeydew just like having a mealybugs infestation so if there is um if there is ants on them we need to check them well and also we need to act quickly encouraging wildlife to control aphids Many wild species eat aphids and actually rely on them as an important food source. Aphid predators include birds, ladybirds, hoverflies, lacewings, and earwigs. Ladybirds, hoverflies, and lacewings lay eggs on the plants infested with aphids and their young eat aphids at an astorming rate. It's tooth that one ladybird can consume several hundreds of aphids over its lifetime. Wasps are voracious feeders of aphids too, so instead of, reg of regarding wasps as villains, leave them alone to help control the pest, so don't kill them if you will spot them on your garden. 
In spring, apids population may rise to begin with as predator populations can be low. But later in the season, this predator population will be rising to get apids under control. Controlling apids in natural way. Well, the chances that by the time you've found apids in your garden plants, the predator have too. So bear in mind that removing apids will likely kill beneficial insects as well, such as ladybirds and lacewings as well as apids, because apids was their food. These predators are not present indoors, so you will need to control apids yourself. So wash off wash off apids in a jet of water from a hose, just like what I did on my eonium because it was really infested by the aphids so what i did is i washed them under the running water until everything gets off and then i prepare myself to dry them off so my succulent will not be soaked for a long period of time through wet soil mix hand squash small infestation well if you can spot them um you should squash them by your own fingers Use biological control which involve buying live predators into the home or greenhouse to deal with aphid infestation. Other planters are buying um, insects that can kill aphids in the greenhouse especially to kill them or to kill to kill them and manage them naturally. Well, how to deter aphids naturally? Pungent smelling plants like soggy, onion, garlic, and nastern trums grown alongside susceptible plants may help deter aphids because they hate how they smell. Create habitat to encourage bird and other predators into, into your garden. And be least tidy in winter so ladybirds can hibernate, encourage birds with climbing plants, and then shrub. Apids target soft young growth, so minimizing use of nitrogen rich fertilizer helps raise true live plants. Nitrogen is the major nutrient used to develop leafy growth. Thoroughly clean out the greenhouse and or your conservators once or twice a year. Remove all plants and debris such as fallen leaves, wash surfaces and stugging. Avoid storing pets and sun dries with your plants. But well, if you have any uh, vacant pots, you can wash them off and also pile them neatly. They provide hiding places for the fish and fungi and structure using a chemical-free product. Using spray to combat aphids. There, I there is a wide range of chemical-free or organic product, those based on synthetic product and chemicals or what we call insecticides. Organic or chemical-free chemical -free sprays are based on plant extract such as plant oils or soft salt. This might be sprayed directly on the aphids in, in order to work and often only persist or for a short time, so may need reapplication. Product based on surfactants or fatty acids have fewer harmful effects than chemical pesticides. Chemical spray are based on synthetic pyrethroid, pyrethroids. Avoid using spray containing neonico neonicotinoids due to their harmful effect on bees. Always follow instruction and do not spray plants in in flower as beneficial insect bees and other plants are likely to be killed. Apply spray late in the day when insects are less active or during night time is the best time. There you have it! Those are the main tips on how to get rid of aphids. Let me know in the comments below if you know some if you know something on how to get rid of aphids. Please don't forget to share this video with your friends if you found it helpful for you. Thanks a lot!
So that's it for today, mga besh. I hope you learned something. And if you have any suggestion or any comment, just drop your comment down below. And also, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be able to be updated to the video like this. So, bye-bye for now. I hope to see you next time.